Now, folks, this whole thing is an outrage, and it has to stop. The normalization, illegal activity by a president and his administration is a violation of the Constitution and Biden's oath of office. He swore to protect us, and he's not. Cartels of drug and human trafficking seem to have taken priority over Americans in every way. I'm just back from a visit to our southwest border with Mexico, and I come away with one overarching thought. The United States, under the Biden administration, has knowingly, intentionally, and with due deliberation, surrendered our southern border. It is now open to anyone from anywhere in the world who wishes to enter our country, leaving one to wonder whether America is a sovereign nation anymore or a simple globalist landing spot. All construction there has come to an abrupt halt. Border Patrol checkpoints are unmanned and Border Patrol agents are pulled away from normal duties to service an onslaught of illegals and unaccompanied children. Additions to electrical services and tunnel detection systems are left incomplete. What I witnessed is both sad and outrageous. Sad because of, of the blood that was shed to create our southern border. Sad for Americans whose property and ranches are being overrun and damaged by those crossing. Sad for the children who are being terrorized, victimized and abused on a 2,000 mile trek unaccompanied by a parent and sad for an America who is quickly, quietly, and with little fanfare, losing her sovereignty. Now, this was no accident. It is by design, by a clueless, left-worshipping president who seems to have lost control of his faculties and who has, from day one, put America last. Now, the Biden administration heralded the opening of the border, both during the campaign and the transition period, trumpeting the halting of all court-ordered deportations, even of criminal felons. They are so weak and disingenuous that their effort to reverse was, do not come now, as opposed to tomorrow. But Biden's welcome mat goes well beyond his statements. The hatred toward Donald Trump and his policies is so intense that there was a concerted effort to reverse anything he did in order to open the borders. Now, when President Trump came into office, he fought against all odds to get the job done. He had the wherewithal, the experience, and the determination to do what others couldn't. And he understood what else needed to be done. One, after reaching a deal with Mexico, migrants were held in Mexico while their asylum claims were being considered by us. Two, migrants couldn't just mouth credible fear. They had to show why they couldn't move to another city within their own country or another country versus why America. Was it for the benefits they could receive? Number three, President Trump worked with Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador pursuant to third world country, uh, third country agreements to hear cases while citizens remained in their countries. Number four, he stopped catch and release. Number five, he prioritized the deportation of criminal aliens. And number six, he hardened the ports of entry. Now, as a result of these policies, the construction of the wall and the mere mention of Trump caused immigration numbers to be lower than they had been in decades. Along comes Joe Biden, who reversed it all, and we are now seeing one of the biggest surges in decades. And folks, we are just getting started. This week, the Democrats passed a bill in the House pushing to grant 2 million illegals already here amnesty. Tonight, you will also hear from Sheriff Mark Donnells on the front lines, on the battleground in Cochise County, Arizona, in a jurisdiction that covers 83 miles of our international border with Mexico, and he talks of a massive crush of illegals, how things were organized and calm under President Trump, and how the Biden administration took away funding, resources, technology, and stopped construction of the wall. How he, the sheriff, sees immigrants from 141 countries breach our southwest border, including 1,100 gang members. How his Arizona jurisdiction in particular, because it is so rural, is a playground for the drug cartels. And how the roads Trump built to accommodate the building of the infrastructure for the walls is now policed by cartels to traffic in drugs. And how shootouts are not uncommon. The saddest part of my interview with Sheriff Donnells is that he says that many where he lives 
don't even feel that they're part of America anymore. So as Fauci and company pontificate on how we should behave, the Biden administration has exempted unaccompanied minors from Title 42 and as a result is risking American lives by allowing people coming in from underdeveloped countries, traveling in large groups through multiple countries, and then putting them on public transportation to send into the interior of our nation without even testing them in the middle of a pandemic. The latest is the reported use of taxpayer money to fly and bus illegals to northern states. Now, folks, this whole thing is an outrage, and it has to stop. The normalization and acceptance of the violation of our laws and illegal activity by a president and his administration is a violation of the Constitution and Biden's oath of office. He swore to protect us, and he's not. Cartels of drug and human trafficking seem to have taken priority over Americans in every way. Once they come here, illegals are shrouded by our Constitution, and they're entitled to all the rights we as Americans have. And the welcoming of individuals about whom we know nothing into our nation is contrary to the spirit of the law. The rewarding of illegal behavior and the ultimate financial burden placed upon you, the American taxpayer, to not only feed, house, medicate, and educate people who are not entitled to be here in the first place is an outrage. As this man and his leftist cohorts prevent us from going to work or even going to places like churches and synagogues and houses of worship, he throws down the welcome mat for those demanding access to the American dream with an arrogance of entitlement and an attitude of complete expectation of the cornucopia of opportunities America has to offer. These opportunities, folks, are for our children and our grandchildren not for people that Joe Biden and his ilk are courting as voters in the next election.